this one work? Much better. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> We're going to get started here shortly. If you could make sure that your phones are on silent, and if you do have to leave, just make sure that you do so relatively quietly through the door. We're going to get started here, everybody. Um, we have a couple of missing panelists, but we've got good stuff whether or not they show up. My name is Harry McCracken, and I write about technology for Time Magazine, and I'm a comics fan, so I'm, I'm glad to be here. And we're going to talk about um, some of the interesting things that are happening at the intersection between comics and technology. But better than that, we're mostly going to show you stuff. Um, and we have a bunch of good people to do that. Um, the first of who is Brian Haberlin, who you may know from Witchblade, but he's here to talk about something called Anomaly, which he co-created, which is a incredibly ambitious uh, graphic novel, which spans the printed and digital worlds. And we're going to start off by having him talk a little bit about it for you and show it to you. show you first, and so we also have, we have 370 page graphic novel, landscape, big, giant, honking thing, we actually printed enough room, about it is it can also be used 
of a weapon <laughs> or take a small caliber bullet? Uh, let me show you other fun stuff about it. Screensaver. All right, so this is our augmented reality app. So you just load it. The app itself, there's a little book icon up here, which will tell you which pages are augmented reality. Currently, there are 40 pages that have augmented reality on them. Okay? So you take the iPad, you download the free app. also interactive. He's a warrior. He doesn't like getting poked. So let's start taking swipes at you. But there's also 100 pages of appendices information that are contained in the, uh, the, the data. So that's the stuff that's not in the book that's sitting there. Harry, you told me you liked to do rapid fire. You want to do that? Oh, yeah. Give us two more minutes. Brian, could you talk a little bit about the software you used to create this? Yeah. So we started this um, four years ago, or worked on it for three years. When we started it, we knew we wanted to do uh, interactive features as well. And I've kind of pioneered 3D, 3D in the uh, in the medium. I've been doing 3D since the old Amiga days, and. Uh, so my workflow is more of a feature animation workflow where we do 3D models, 3D sets, draw overs, that sort of thing to get the effects that we want to get. But what that gives us is characters that are rigged, have lip sync, can be animated, and do all kinds of stuff. Um, and what came into our window was devices like this. And all of a sudden, okay, let's use that to do stuff as well. So if I hit the, just the home button again, I'll get to the interactive app. Ah, uh, yes, I know. <laughs> so we also did a fully interactive uh, app with 16 voice actors doing 90 speaking parts, full soundtrack, all that kind of stuff. Actors from TV and, and movies <laughs> and games. <laughs> and this is on <laughs> on the Mac OS, Android, Nook, Fire. Justice Prime, standard mm. first contact mission for conglomerate specs. Now this contains even more appendices information than. The AR for the book. Yeah, there's no, that's all interactive. These hot spots. You can say, "Oh, what's up with that ship?" I can spin it around with my finger, and then have all the service history of the shi individual ship. Forcers, proven time and time again, ready for anything. Enforcer. Control data on that. And then you can also, what we like about it is what we want to do is give you any way that you can consume it you wanted to. So you can have it automatically read to you like a movie. You can have it in free mode.
mode where you're zooming in and examining pages. You can have it like I was just doing, which is directed mode. You can turn on and off the words, turn on and off the voice soundtrack, turn on and off the music soundtrack, turn on and off the touch point, or you can just go straight to touch point. Red fire start. Is there a charge for the, the app? Or? The augmented reality apps are free with the book and the poster. The uh, the interactive app is now ninety nine cents across the board, and it's also an iBook. It, it's everywhere it's at right now. It just went on. We just put it on sale for Comic Con for ninety nine cents. But the first chapters are all free, so you can always check it out and look at it. And you're working on some additional projects that incorporate some of the same technologies and, and approaches? Right. We have um, uh, Shifter, which comes out later this year, which is the same sort of thing. It also has another app that's kind of fun on it. It has a facial tracking app. Part of the premise there is the hero can be become different animals and prehistoric animals, and this will put their faces on your faces, and you can record them on your tablet or, or iPad and actually send them to your friends. All of a sudden, your face becomes a lion face or something like that. And then we have between worlds, which is young adult prose novel, sort of in the spirit of Dinotopia in, in design, you know, heavy illustrations done by Dana Clado for every page. And then we have Anomaly 2 coming out at the end of next year. And you were telling me that, I mean, even though augmented reality has been around for a few years, it's still not something that has broken out and then to kind of mainstream consciousness, so people still are kind of amazed yeah. when, when they see what you've done. Yeah, people, it, it, it's like magic. Because it's funny because then you have people who grab their phones because they see us doing it or grab their, their tablets and they go, okay. And they point them at the, <laughs> the page. It's like, no, you have to download an app first before you can do that. It's not magic. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it has the effect. And we have kids. We have one of the, one of the, one of the, the uh, uh, augmented reality points. Uh, the bugs come out of the screen when you tap it. And we have some little kids going through a few of them. They're like, having the best time, best time. And he pokes that one. And the other kid goes, ah! <laughs> Um, but really what's putting this all in a real house is by having our 3D base, which is going to be much more difficult if we did traditional hand-drawn comics. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Sure. I'm taking my hand into the iPad. No, it's mine now. I broke it. <laughs> we are going to move on to our... And uh, he's the co-creator of a couple of I mean, very long-running webcomics. I'd say probably by webcomic standards, uh, one of which is called Least Second View and one of which is called Looking for Group. And he's going to show you some of his stuff and talk about it. So yeah, uh, hi. So least I could do has been going on for uh, we're entering our tenth year. Looking for group is six, and um, I don't have too much of either here. I've been mostly uh, I was playing with uh, Manga Studio Five when it came out, of course, just before. Uh, pardon me, in the fall and before Christmas. And uh, I've when I got uh, Manga Studio 4, I quickly moved to using it for uh, looking for group, for the more ambitious page layouts and, and compositions and for the better inking engine. But Manga Studio 5, they've really upped their game, Smith Micro, on the coloring. And I'm, I'm working towards just going entirely uh, to it because it handles memory so much better. This was a little doodle. If you follow me on Twitter, and I Twitter stalk a lot of people like we all do, and Will Wheaton, who has like, you know, more Twitter followers than there are on Earth, technically, or something. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the thing is, I work from home on a Cintiq. Uh, I'm at my computer all the time. And so when I'm working, and if I take a little break and I get distracted by social media, and Will Wheaton's a funny guy. So <laughs> He posted a conversation with his dog. He sometimes tweets about his pets and whatnot. 
and this particular example was he posted, uh, I guess on his Tumblr, this little conversation with his dogs trying to get at his potato salad. And the next thing I knew, you know, 40 minutes later, I'd bang this out in Manga Studio 5 um, because it's just that much fun. You know, I'd seen pictures of his dogs already. Um, I guess he's not that short in real life, but... <laughs> Those are big dogs. It's a big dog. They are big dogs. It, it, it was just that kind of... Uh, it's one of the things I love about digital. You know, for some artists, it's watercolors or oils. For me, it's digital. And I just love the freedom and the versatility that it allows you. And the tools are getting better and better. And Smith Micro Engine is, is the closest you can get to traditional sensitivity and, and such. It doesn't have to look digital, even though it is digital? No, that's the thing is I'm not... Digital is... is computers do clean really well. Um, and it's easy. If you work digital, you've probably encountered the client who says, you know, I can get my 16-year-old to do it fine, but you're getting dazzled by glossy paper and shiny inks, and if you polish a turd, it's still a turd. <laughs> but if you get an artist to do it, you know, you can make some choices, use some texture brushes to, to mess up the lines a little, to, to deliberately find those happy accents that make art sparkle. This was an, another early, uh, I find I do better personally, rather than doing <coughs> tutorials, I just set myself a project and figure out how my workflow translates to a new software. Um, and Manga Studio 5 has gotten a little more um, Adobe, not to use that word in any detriment to either p uh, company, but just in terms of the, the power of their coloring engine and you know techniques I have developed for myself in my Adobe workflow have just immediately stepped right across the border to Manga Studio 5 that weren't translating quite enough to Manga Studio 4. And you know, the uh, you can see I, I did the lines. I wish it now I brought the sketch and the, the line work. I did all my lines in black and then lock transparency was able to paint the lines with color uh, using the, the reference layer feature to just flat fill this in no time flat. Sorry for the pun. Uh, if you've ever done digital work, you know, flatting is just one of those tedious things you have to go through and ups, you miss the gap and it fills the whole page and you know, you can, you can set your, your sub-tool properties to ignore gaps of certain pixel widths. So you can have a looser, more vibrant line as opposed to everything being fully closed shapes like a coloring book. And it was like dropper, dropper, dropper. This thing was filled in no time and I could get to the fun stuff like the rendering and the shading and the texturing. Uh, I'm still learning. I did have to bring it into uh, Adobe to do the, the text stretching along the poultry box. <coughs> Um, and the Kirby Crackle brush is the first brush I've made in Manga Studio 5. I, I'm really excited about the, the, um, the decorative brushes uh, to use multiple shapes. Uh, this was was that just a personal project or was that actually? No, it's just a personal project. Uh, it's just the kind of random crap that comes out of my head as a cartoonist. I, oh, I can't remember what was going, again, just discussion of which Muppet would be a good doctor. And, you know, like they say, you never forget your first. <laughs> and my first was Tom Baker. And suddenly Camilla was R R R R Romana. And I was off and running with a new project. <laughs> this was a, just a morning sketch. I decided to do Hulk versus Doomsday. Uh, actually, in the first pass, I did a much more typical muscle-bound, serious, quote-unquote, drawing, but I'm a cartoonist, and, and really I wanted to play with the body shapes and the lumps. And just with the pencil tool, which uh, really, really had that feel of graphite and, and just having some fun, and then just quickly throwing on the radial line ruler. The rulers in Manga Studio are amazing. Uh, if you've used any other digital tool, I think except Sketchbook Pro is now starting to copy it a bit. You type come in rulers, you get the measuring bars, vertical and horizontal. Those are measurement rulers. I've actually put a, a set square or, or an ellipse template on my Cintiq in the past to draw shapes because I couldn't get a sensitive line. In Manga Studio, I'm able to draw a spline or a poly shape and manipulate it and use it and you ink along it. And they have specialty rulers to help you with special effects like perspective grids and things like that, and they have a radial line tool, and I was like, 
pop a focus point in there and zap away. Again, actually, this was my first project for Kirby Crackle. I'm just a fanboy. I'm just a big old fanboy. Uh, plug for Kirby Crackle. Check them out if you haven't. Uh, they're wonderful musicians. And Jim, of course, Jim DeMott, I'm going to get his name wrong, runs Emerald City. Um, what a nose. I just love that face. So, <laughs> Looking for an excuse to draw them. I drew them as Galactus and Silver Surfer. Um, again, like, like I said, the Kirby Crackle brush, the first one I made. And, and just trying to do all the things I would normally do with texture brush lines and, and uh, you know, a simple cloud fill and such like that. It's just so much fun. This is more typically how I, what I do in, in Manga Studio, doing the inking for Looking for Group, which is our comic twice a week. And uh, it's, it's so wonderful because they've obviously worked so well with comic artists, with sequential artists, that they've gotten us past the drudge things as quickly as possible. The tedium of having to lay out the page, measure out your rulers, or your, your gutters, and your panels, and rule it all up consistently are just a couple clicks and you're on to the fun stuff. And it or, you know, automatically organizes layers into groups that are masked off so I can sketch the whole page and then generate a bunch of layer panels and each one of those rectangles is got a mask so I can ink within that group freely going, you know, letting my strokes go beyond the borders and not worrying about messing up the rest of my page or having to block out the gutters afterwards and clean up the edges. The large routine end work is this what uh, you did for Mary? Yeah, this is my, I mean, this is uh, what I do for work. And how long have you been going? It is, uh, we're in our sixth year. Cool. And I guess I switched over to Manga Studio about almost three years ago, it was four. And I didn't think I would go quite as quickly. You know, you get a new piece of software. I thought, I'll transition, I'll transition. After that Kirby Crackle, I'm like, why waste time? What were you using before? I was using Photoshop originally, which, um, you know, does the job, but nowhere near. It's, it's nowhere near as effortless, and I don't know what or why the differences are between the drivers, but inking in Photoshop versus inking in Manga Studio, the brushes are just so much more sensitive. And, and I'm not using anything special. I'm using the standard G-Pen, uh, maybe a couple different width variations. There's two or three sizes I like, like you would just for your regular workflow. If you use microns or sables or something like that, you know, I kind of go between six and ten in the G-Pen, but that's all I need. And and it's it just, it, it, there's, there's a, this may sound weird if you're not honest, there's a sensuality to inking, and while well, the tactile experience of brush versus paper versus pen on Cintiq is a little different. The, the lushness of that line, the depth of the ink color, you know, the flow and opacity that you can program in is just so sweet in do the program. Do you do anything these days with pencils and ink and paper or are you purely digital? I'm, I'm, I've been, in terms of professional work, I've been purely digital for a very long time. I still, you know, I got nothing against it. I used to keep a, a sketchbook very regularly until uh, I got into web comics full time and then I just haven't had the time. I'm actually just recently re getting back into the sketchbook habit with my Android tablet, mm. which has a Wacom active digitizer on it. Um, uh, is that the uh, Samsung? The Note 10.1. Yeah, so if Mega Studio wants to make a, um, an app for Android, I would be not complaining. <laughs> just saying, but it's, it's just as a sketchbook. I mean, pencils are great. I don't think you can yet beat traditional pen and, or brush and ink for a, a fully versatile line, but it's it's getting a run for its money with the tech and with the software, it's hard to say. Thank you. You're welcome. Next we have Billy Dallas Patton, who is a, a versatile illustrator and cartoonist who's worked on a bunch of eclectic projects. And yeah, he'll that's me. <laughs> Eclectic. I stole that from your website. Uh, <laughs> and it'll show, it'll show you some of the stuff he's done. So, like you always should, we're going to start with a giant robot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this was drawn in Manga Studio 4 um, using the symmetry tool. Um, if we 
as you can see, it started out as a sketch. Uh, the symmetry tool allows you to draw, of course, you know, one side and it mirrors it over here. Um, and I've been using Manga Studio now for, for three years and it is by far my favorite program um, to draw in. It is my only program to draw in. Um, I still color in Photoshop. The workflow for me in Photoshop is a little easier. Um, so took this to final line and as you can see there is some differences between this and the final and then you know the uh, the final rendering and everything was done in Photoshop but without Manga Studio to draw it I would have had to take it built it 2D at the time and then scan it in and then paint it and do it and remove the white so I could do color fills and do all this other stuff and instead I just took it straight into Photoshop and probably cut you know between light boxing and everything I mean there's a quick, easy shortcut, control B, it changes the layer of, of that you're drawing on to a blue line, and then you just create a new layer on top. And that's as simple as that. Before, I would be like, sketch, grab another piece of paper, pull this one off, retape it down, <coughs> pull this one on, retape. And it, what took me 10 minutes, you know, not 10 minutes, okay, I, I'm exaggerating, five minutes to do, probably. Now it takes me five seconds. Because I now have it set up as an action where if I hit control B, it changes it to a blue line. And it also turns down the opacity to about 30% and creates a new line on top, a new layer on top of it. So I have an action set up, just control B and it, I'm automatically, and I don't even have to do anything, I'm just drawing on the new layer. So yeah, it literally you know, shaves off. And over the course of a drawing, that can save you an hour sometimes of just from the changeover. Um, what I most like about digital is it allows you to screw up and screw up a lot. And you don't have to feel bad about it, right? You can be like, I screwed that up. Oh, I don't have to start all over. I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna lasso this and I'm gonna stretch it a little bit and redo it and then boom, new layer, redraw and I'm done. So, and if you can't, I mean, you can spill coffee on your computer but it's a lot harder, right? And you know, so, or your, your five-year-old child you know, suddenly starts grabbing your Wacom pen and starts scribbling on your pen or on your on your on your Cintiq, which I have actually. It's not a five-year-old. It's a two, my two-year-old does this, and uh, you can recover. Before you'd beat him, you'd go to jail, you'd be behind <laughs> so far, and then it was just it would you know the whole day's lost. Um, again, remember they're recording this. That, by the way, that was for comedic effect. <laughs> that is not an omission of any wrongdoing on my part. So this was again, this was again drawn in Manga Studio um, and then taken into Photoshop. This was the same robot in an action pose. This was a speed painting. Um, <clears throat> this took me about two to four hours, I would guess. It's been a while since, uh, and so I don't actually remember. But the, the, the idea was draw it, as, sketch it as fast as possible, get it into Photoshop and paint it as fast as possible. And now that I look at it, it just looks like I painted it as fast as possible. Um, this is my first attempt at comic style inking in Manga Studio back three years ago or so. Um, it's when I really decided I liked it. I hate the drawing, but then again, I'm an artist, so I hate everything I do. Um, but to show that um, I used the ruler tool that, um, um, I'm sorry, your first, Lar, Lar, right? Lar was talking about. All of those, um, I created one single line, and then there's this double brush that creates a dupe, and I just traced along that line, and I created a neat little lasso that took no time at all. Before, where I'd have to get out French curves and do all this stuff, and you know, and it just it makes it far less tedious and painful. Um, this was the cover of Dungeons and Dragons number five from IDW Studios. It was an alternate cover, done completely in Manga Studio. As you can see. You can get all kinds of neat brushy effects in this in this program. Um, I used the crosshatch tool. Um, I built a couple tools for myself. Um, the brush tool can give you a nice dry brush effect. Um, and what's really neat is you can then turn and what you cannot do in Photoshop unless you use the eraser tool and set up the tool. All I do is select um, transparency, and my brush becomes an eraser without having to switch over to the eraser tool. With the same settings and everything, it's just drawing in transparency. So I can draw back into my hatching, as you can see, well, oops. 
I can draw back into my hatching and get these really great negative effects. And this was the first piece where people actually did not know that I did not ink it uh, traditionally because they did not know that you could do these kinds of things digitally. Um, here's a bunch of sketches for my day job, which is video games. Um, all done in Manga Studio and then some light colors applied. As you can see, you can sketch, sketch nice and rough. Why? Are you using a Cintiq as well? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm uh, I am a Cintiq um, fiend. I uh, <clears throat> I can't draw on anything else anymore. I tried drawing, I, I, I like drawing analog, but my finger twitches on the control Z button and I forget I have to erase. <laughs> and it's not very fun. And most of you look at me like I'm crazy, but it's true. It, you, you, I will sit here and draw in a sketchbook and my finger will go like this. And I'm waiting for the line to disappear. And I, and I don't, and I have to think for a second. I'm like, oh yeah. And I have to reach, grab an eraser. I'm like, well that's not very eff uh, I, efficient. I tried to do a pinch and zoom on a sketch today. It's been a long time, since, your first time on C and I was doing a sketch and I went to ink it and I did that to zoom into the inking and like, that was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> the muscle memory happened. You know you've been doing it too long where you like drop a coffee cup or something in the kitchen and it breaks and you just control Z. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm there because I use control Z a lot. <laughs> so the speed at which you can create things and again, you just draw, get a big piece of paper and you can just layer it and, and you can just draw it all at once and there's no referring back and forth. And as you can see, this is the evolution of the sketches. Some choices are made. Um, things start getting tightened up and again, this is the, where the control B new layer comes in here where we've tightened it up. Why will this not zoom for me? It doesn't like me. Um, so this is the line. And then again, this is a little more comic book style, uh, coloring, but, and, a, and this is, and the one on the far right is a little more painterly, but this was under the direction of the art director. So, um, I won't go into that minutia, but you can see that it, it working digital. Why? Why? Oh, there we go. Okay, so now, here is how I build a page. This was done for the city of Seattle. Um, I'm working with a company who is trying to help promote um, driver awareness, um, not, you know, killing bicyclists and stuff like that. So, um, and texting and driving and, and this kind of stuff. So, it's part of a booklet. So, initially the sketch is done in Manga Studio. This was Manga Studio 5. And then I laid in grayscales to make sure that my my planes are working because I hadn't done uh, real comic book pages in quite some time. Um, this is some of the penciling tools. Um, this, okay, now we're gonna really get to the to where it comes from. Manga Studio allows you to bring in 3D objects and it will it will it will trace it for you. And so I was working on a short deadline and I'm like, I can draw a car, but why do I want to take the time to draw a car if I don't need to? So I found a model and, you know, licensed it and I put it in the, in the page and, you know, and then I ink on top of it or color on top of it and you, you, you rarely know. Same thing here. Oh, there's a model. Now I didn't go into Maya, like our esteemed panel here and, you know, build it and then like do all kinds of cool stuff, but I faked it well enough that it worked. Okay, and then, and then here's the final inks. One other great thing is inking backgrounds in um, Manga Studio or digitally is, in Manga Studio I use a vec the vector tools. Um, the vector <coughs> program allows you to <coughs> intersect the line and then there's an eraser tool that allows you to erase to the intersection. And so what happens is that line drops off, that line drops, and you get a perfect corner. So you don't have to, you know, drag it and go, oh, oh. And, it, and kind of uh, finesse it in there, you can just go and then just quickly switch to erase, knock those two ends off and you've got, you've got your line. Um, another thing it does too is if you haven't drawn it big enough, the vector tools allow you to um, adjust the line weight. So you can make them, now it does make them a little flatter, but with, you know, if you're doing open coloring and, or you're doing painting, it's not as important. For so something like this, does your, do you show your client these early passes or do you yeah. just turn in a beautiful finished piece of work? No, these were all, these were all stages that I, I submitted to the client for approval so that he could see how we were going. And if you've ever worked for the government, 
they have to have their say too. So there was, you know, they wanted to approve every every step of the way. So in comic books, the editor would get the first one, and then they would get the last one <laughs> because of the speed at which you're working generally. Um, here is a uh, poster I did for a friend of mine. Um, he does a comic book. Uh, it was a promotional poster. Uh, this was all done in Photoshop, and each there's one, two, three, four, five, six separate illustrations that I did that I built in different files and then brought them together for this collage. Um, as you can see, again, like here's right here on the arm is a good example of um, uh, shoot, you can't see where I'm pointing. In the middle of the in the middle of the screen is where I, I erased out and got some nice negative effects on the on the arm of the skin, on the skin of the arm. Wow. And then let's see. And this is a detailed shot, same thing. Brought in a 3D model. Um, this time I didn't allow, I didn't use a lot of the, the the tracing tools. I drew over it myself to get a little bit more of the looser line, so it didn't look so dead. Um, and you can also see where again where you just get some nice you can get some nice dry brush effects and some nice negative effects. Now here's here is what I'm currently working on for myself, which is my own. Uh, going to be my own self-published slash webcomic. Um, and this is a character design from that. Again, nice dry brush effects. Um, it doesn't look digital. It looks nice um, and, and scratchy and loose or looser than, than the typical digital drawing is. Why is that in there again? I don't know. Here is a rough for a poster for the project. Um, in this project, there is again robots. <laughs> So um, this was done again, and I flatted the colors this time in Manga Studio. So my, my process has evolved. I'm flatting now in Manga Studio, and then I'll export that to, to Photoshop, the color. And actually, I'll probably be able to color pretty soon in, in, in Manga Studio. Oops. And then here is, is the very first uh, promotional artwork for my webcomic that will be coming out later this year. Um, I actually, this was had to be sent before I got all the graphic design treatment on it. Um, but the, uh, <coughs> the pencil drawing, this was just basically uh, using pencils and, uh, in, in Manga Studio. I'm not even going to ink it. I'm just going to use the, because uh, I love how the grayscale works for the line. And so, and then I took it in again into Photoshop and, and built the background and all of that good stuff. So, yay, uh, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. That's kind of why I'm here. Is that I'm I, I was a, a comic book artist, and and much like that movie, I just can't quit co the comic books, you know. And so I, I'm back again, and hopefully uh, this time I'll stick a little bit longer uh, than I did the last time. But um, so that's it for that, I think. Yep, that's sure. it. That's Thank the you, last Robert. piece. Next we have Fahim Niaz, who is with Smith Microsoft, where the creators of Manga Studio and a number of other products used by for digital art and cartooning. And we are going to switch over to the Mac for that. So while we're waiting for uh, Harry to uh, set up here, it'll take a second. Um, how many of you uh, draw? OK. OK. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. And, uh, and the rest of you are just avid uh, consumers of uh, comic books and, and what have you. Oh, OK, nice. Oh, and a writer. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Um, when you guys draw, do you use, how many of you use digital tools? Raise your hand. OK, cool, perfect. And then how many of you use the traditional means? OK, and a combination of the two, I'm sure, you know, perfect, yeah. So I'm going to try to um, talk as minimally as I can about Manga Studio. Uh, the gentlemen here on my right have done a great job speaking uh, about our product. Um, we just recently launched it, uh, mo version 5, and I've been pretty uh, lucky to have worked uh, with uh, this particular product um, since 2005. Um, but, you know, what's really interesting to see is What's really interesting to see is how things have changed over the years. Um, when we first went to uh, trade shows, folks typically, you know, were very reluctant to go to digital means. Uh, I'm just gonna switch over. Uh, but now people are adopting products, and not just our product, but other products. And this is a win-win for for our industry. 
Uh, and I think it's a win-win for uh, artists such as yourself um, because it allows you to uh, sort of break through the barriers that existed in the past and be able to publish your own web comics and your own comics and what have you and have a fan base. Um, and, and I'm sure that Lar and uh, you know Billy could attest to this as well as Brian that you know once you have your own fan base, the sky's pretty much the limit. Uh, you know, and uh, you can do what you what you like. So with that, let me just plug this in. I have a treat for you today. Oh no, I think I just as soon as I touch it, it uh, there we go. Do you have a USB port on this side? Yeah. Let's see if we can plug it in. So I have a cool little device that I wanted to show you guys, um, and it's not available in the U.S. And Billy mentioned robots, so I have something similar to a robot here. And I wanted to show you one feature in Manga Studio that I think is absolutely amazing. So this particular tool, it's a doll. It's called Kumerian. It's a 3D, 3D uh, object or 3D input device, better known as, you know, um, some, some people call it like a motion capture device, but it really isn't. It's a, it's, a, it's a doll that has all these points, and as soon as you move the doll, a 3D object on the canvas moves as well. So I'm going to set it up real quick so that we can get it going. Uh, if I can get you to go to, uh, I think it's either. I know you're all thinking it. Five. But cool. I was thinking it was voodoo Kumerian magic. <laughs> you guys are gonna lose yourselves over this. <laughs> and then follow these for a second here. And then if you could go through. And so, so the reason somebody would use a product like this would actually be because they want a specific pose. They want something that they're looking for and they can't find it, uh, and they don't have time to actually create it with a 3D <coughs> tool like Maya Poser or something else. So th what they would do is uh, they would drag in a particular 3D object in the program, like so, and then they would have to calibrate it so that it looked exactly like that. And I am going to calibrate it right here. And so now, See, that should work well. Okay, perfect. So you, you notice it's got a gyroscope in there. And as I'm moving the character, you'll see this 3D oh object moving as well. So if you're into creating super fast comics, you can use the 3D characters in here and have something whipped up pretty quick. But ideally what people would want to use is a, a particular pose. Let's say, you know, some sort of a, an interesting pose that they're looking for here. It looks kind of weird, but... He's going on Walking Dead. Yeah, he's looking on Walking Dead. Zombied out. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, the purpose of it is basically to create a specific pose and then keep that pose in your application and then draw over it. And then you have that perfect pose. Um, so that's really th the idea for Kumerian. There's a lot of other uses as well. You could, I mean, if your mind thinks about it, you could realize that you go into stop motion animation as well. So, for instance, if I have something like this and I freeze it, and I freeze this part, and I freeze this part, and I'm adding it onto the canvas, I can actually create a mini animation out of it. So there's a lot of things that can be born out of this particular tool. Um, so that's really what I wanted to show you guys. And Brian, you want to play with it a little bit? So not available in the US? Not available in the US right now. Uh, it's called Kuma. And uh, hopefully coming to the U.S. at some point. We hope so. The problem with it right now is that it needs to go through uh, a bunch of legal um, certifications, and that takes quite a bit of time. It's happened in Japan, but by the time that it happens over here, it may take you know at least a year, a little bit longer. The device is also extremely okay. expensive. It's about uh, yeah. it's about fifteen hundred dollars. Don't want to take it away. And so, but <laughs> for a typical you know user, it probably wouldn't be you know. That, that great of an investment, but yeah. eventually, if you're yeah, really into crowd. comic creation, <laughs> you know, this would be something that you would use. I just see you doing a dubstep video. <laughs> <laughs> so how easy is it to create an original, your own character, like that? Right now, it's pretty difficult. Um, we have a bunch of presets, and then you'd have to buy some more presets off of us. Right now, this tool is a 2D tool. It's just got some 3D objects in there. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it'll ever become a 3D tool, but eventually we'll be able to import oh, OBJ files 
from other 3D programs such as Maya, 3D oh, Studio Max, right. and other major, major players like that. And then you'd be able to apply settings to those as well. Are the health controls, does it go down that far? It does, yeah. It goes down. it does. There, there's a... Uh, well, I meant fingers, actually. No, not yet. Okay. Fingers, not yet. I know you're still on your own for facial expressions and that kind so of emotion. Come on, you got to do some of the work. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> So what's really, really amazing is there's actually built-in facial expressions in this uh, uh, puppet. So I'll actually show that while uh, Lars playing with it. Let's see if I can get All right, I changed there. my mind. I guess you don't have to do all the work. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's, the gyroscope has been stopped, but facial expressions exist right here. Uh, and I can change the character's face. It really helps out whenever you have a particular look and feel. So... Uh, so it's built into the to the application as it exists. You don't even have to use this device. Let's see. Do you want to play with it, Harry? So with that, that's pretty much it, you know, with regards to Manga Studio. Um, and so you, you could you, um, if you were to build your character in 3D, yes, and then would you be able to bring, you can import 3D elements right. into it. So if you brought in your own 3D uh, figures as materials, they would work with Qmon. That is the end goal. Uh, right now it's not possible, but eventually it will be possible. That's it, what we're working on. I need to lie down. <laughs> <laughs> and I hopefully it's like anything else in the world of technology where over time it will get more inexpensive and A absolutely. more accessible. You, absolutely. I mean, if you realize the world, the world of 2D and 3D are merging, and some of the stuff that you're seeing in Brian's work um, I mean, I'm sure he's used a lot of 3D elements, and it's a 2D book. So it's amazing to see those worlds sort of collide and, uh, and help people out. Really, the, the premise of this panel was, you know, technology and being able to use whatever at your disposal to, you know, sort of speed up your workflow. So it, it's amazing to see what's happening out there, whether it be Manga Studio, 3D Studio Max, Photoshop, or what have you, Painter. So it's great to what see that. that. Poser program? Poser is an awesome <laughs> program. That's another one of our products. But uh, it's basically a 3D human figure design tool. Brian is an expert user of that. He, I'm sure you can speak to that as well. Brian, if, if, if you started with the Amiga, that means you've been at this for like 25 years or yeah. thereabouts. Yeah. So as soon as the, I figured out that the computer was going to be an art tool, I wanted to know how to use it. Well, we have um, a bit of time for some questions if anybody in the audience would like to ask any or all of our panelists about either the work they saw or anything else. There's a microphone over here if you'd like to use it. Microphone over here. Any questions at all? If not, I'll start asking some more. They can be personal, too. <laughs> not for me. One question I always have about the internet and, and anything is, is it making it easier or harder for an artist to, to make a living doing this stuff? Uh, because I know it kind of slices both ways. Maybe some of our artists can talk about what they're doing. And I, I think some of the stuff you're doing is just available for free on the internet. Well, what I'd like to talk to is <clears throat> what it does allow me to do is do do my day job and more efficiently create at night when I'm at home. Because that's when I'll be working. I work 9 to 5 downtown at, at a company I cannot talk about. Um, and, or I'm not authorized to mention. Um, and then I go home and I decompress a little bit, hang out with the kids. And about 8.30, 9 o'clock, I'm sitting down at my desk. And in two, two and a half hours, I get at least what, I, what it used to take six hours for me to get, get, get done. And so it doesn't, before when I would come home and I would try to chill out and I would wanna go work on it, I'd be like, oh, I only got two and a half hours, what's the point? Now I'm like, I have two and a half hours. That's plenty of time. And so what I think it will do, it will allow the person who's dreaming of being an artist a lot easier, a lot more uh, or more open door to doing that. Laura, well, I was up last night reading your comics for free on the web, <laughs> so I don't know if, what, if yeah, there's a business I, model there, whether you're just doing it for the enjoyment uh, of doing no, it. No, there's, there's a business model, and, and we're booth 1106 if you want to come by and see us. Um, thankfully, I'm not the one who has to worry too much about the business model. I have my writing partner and, and other partners in the company who are smarter than me and better than me and when we decided, you know, it started out all for shits and giggles, and then we hit that tipping point of readership where it's like we could possibly do this full time. 
At that point, we realized if we did, we'd be doing the business full time and have no time for the art. So we were able to engage friends of ours who had business degrees and enjoyed spreadsheets and numbers and yelling at people to help us. And it's been a 10 year journey and it's continuing. But I couldn't keep up with my daily schedule. I do six four panel comics a week, one Sunday comic, two full page, full, full comic pages. I'm doing nine comics a week. I could not do it traditionally. There just would not be enough hours in the day. I've got four cats. My kids have gone past the stepping on things stage, but they did that too. <laughs> like, it would be impossible without digital tools. And Brian, you have a—I mean, you have a seventy-five dollar physical object, uh, which I assume is part of. Uh, how yeah, you're I doing mean, this but as but, a but 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 the, what's interesting about that is so, you know, we've had the problem with this thing is uh, is that it takes a certain amount of hand selling. Because people have to see this to see it in action before they go, oh, I want to do, want to catch, catch that. But with the apps, we have all. Because what's 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 exciting for me is we have you know iBook, we have Mac OS app, we have Kindle, we have Nook, we have all these things that I get to see the data of, of what numbers are. And we have, so we sold actual so far three thousand physical of these things, seventy five bucks for a comic that no one knows about, which is pretty good. But We've had 25,000 downloads of the other versions. So it reaches farther, and I think people, this is like the DVD for the, you know, you, you see the movie or whatever, and you buy the DVD. I think this is kind of almost the equivalent, the, the, the web stuff and the interactive stuff acts as the current, you know, movie or whatever that you see. Very cool. Well, we are out of time, but thank you so much, everybody. And thank you, panelists. Thank you. If, if you guys have any questions, I'll be outside. If anything comes up to me here, Mike. And I'm just willing to talk to anybody. <laughs> We're bored. <laughs>